the confirmed number of new coronavirus cases reported in Los Angeles County from September 11th to the 13th is 5,690 with 80 additional deaths. Here in Torrance, 47 additional cases were reported with no new deaths. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Rhiannon Trutanich. It's Tuesday, September 14th. The Los Angeles County Department of Public Health was making improvements to data processing systems over the weekend, resulting in multiple day updates. The latest numbers show the county's daily COVID-19 hospitalizations are trending lower. There are currently 1,218 people hospitalized with the coronavirus. That is 262 fewer people over the past week and 469 fewer people over the past two weeks. As of August 28th, unvaccinated adults ages 50 and over were more than 17 times likely to be hospitalized than those who were vaccinated in the same age group. Hospitalizations in younger unvaccinated adults ages 18 to 49 are 23 times higher than for the vaccinated in the same demographic. Public Health Director Dr. Barbara Ferrer says 57% of the nearly 10.3 million LA County residents, including those who are not yet eligible for the vaccine, are fully vaccinated. She says it is not enough to avoid continued surges in cases. A new report from a top medical journal states there isn't strong enough data to necessitate booster shots for those who are already fully vaccinated. The Lancet report has 18 co-authors, including two high-ranking officials from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, who resigned over the booster shot controversy. They cited the vaccine's efficacy as still high enough to prevent severe disease and death. Most of the authors in the published review live outside the U.S. and include experts from the World Health Organization who are calling for a COVID booster moratorium until 2022. Some doctors agree with the call, saying while a third dose may provide slight personal benefits at home, it would be a bigger benefit to have that dose go to somebody else that has not yet been vaccinated. The FDA's advisory committee will meet this Friday to review Pfizer's booster shot data before the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention makes a final decision on approval. New studies from the CDC continue to highlight the continued effectiveness of all three approved vaccines in the U.S. On Friday, the National Public Health Agency published three studies that backed up previous claims that Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson's vaccines continue to protect Americans months after they become fully vaccinated. One of the studies show an increase in breakthrough cases among the roughly 600,000 COVID-19 cases recorded across 13 U.S. jurisdictions as the Delta variant became prevalent but it was still a very small percentage of the total number of vaccinated people being observed. Between April 4th and July 17th, only 46,312 or 8% of cases were reported among fully vaccinated people, compared to 569,142 or 92% of COVID-19 cases among people who were not fully vaccinated. Breakthrough cases leading to hospitalization or death also remained uncommon. Of the total number of cases in the study, only 2,976 or 8% of hospitalizations and 616 or 9% of deaths were reported among fully vaccinated people. Compared to 34,972 or 92% of hospitalizations, and 6,132 or 91% of deaths among people who were not fully vaccinated. According to the CDC reports, unvaccinated people were five times as likely to become infected, 10 times as likely to be hospitalized, and 10 times more likely to die than fully vaccinated people. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky says the bottom line is that vaccination works and will protect Americans from severe COVID-19 complications. The Delta variant continues to create dire situations across the country. Intensive care units are running out of bed space in multiple states, and in one case, a man died after failing to find a spot for himself. Ray Demonia passed away at a facility in Mississippi about 200 miles away from his Alabama home. 
His family says they called 43 hospitals across three states before finding an available cardiac ICU bed for the 73 year old. In his obituary, relatives asked people to get vaccinated so that hospital resources can be freed up for non COVID related emergencies. This news comes as coronavirus cases in children continue to rise. They now make up one in four new infections. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is warning parents not to give children under 12 a COVID-19 vaccine until they give approval, saying, quote, children are not small adults. Meanwhile, emergency physician and medical analyst Dr. Leanna Wen said for those who qualify to get vaccinated, not doing so is like driving under the influence. She said, quote, we need to start talking about the choice to remain unvaccinated as the choice to go out and drive in intoxicated. Today's recall election will decide whether California Governor Gavin Newsom will be replaced by any one of the 46 candidates running against him. Polls opened across California at 7 a.m. this morning and will remain open until 8 p.m. Voters can turn in their mail-in ballot at any polling place or ballot drop box, but it must be handed over by 8 p.m. LA Metro is offering free bike, bus and train rides today to encourage voter turnout. And those planning to mail a ballot must have it postmarked by Tuesday for their vote to be counted. While there have been previous attempts to recall Governor Newsom, this is the first challenge to get on to the ballot. The election will also be the second recall election for a governor in California's state history. The first took place in 2003 when Democratic Governor Gray Davis was in office and was replaced by Republican Arnold Schwarzenegger. You can also find a mail-in ballot drop box adjacent to the Katie Geiser Civic Center Library. For more information, go to lavote.net. The United States Postal Service is hiring more than 40,000 seasonal workers in anticipation of a busy holiday season. Employment opportunities include drivers and mail carriers, USPS officials say the holidays are the peak season for mail and package deliveries. The Postal Service is hosting 58 job fairs in cities across the country. Many of those are right here in Southern California. USPS officials say the job fairs will be walk-in events. Postal Service Human Resources personnel will be there to answer any questions. Social distancing will be enforced and masks will be required. To learn more and to apply, go to USPS.com slash hiring. The third round of child tax credit payments are going out starting tomorrow. The Internal Revenue Service will be disbursing the payments to millions of families. The government recently announced a new website to help more Americans apply for and receive the expanded child tax credit. GetCTC.org was developed by Code for America in collaboration with the White House and Treasury Department. The goal is to provide a simple and straightforward online form that can be easily accessed on mobile phones as well as on the computer. These applications are targeted at those who are not legally obligated to file taxes because they don't earn enough money. The credit is a monthly payment of as much as $300 per child that was part of the $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package. Parents of a child under the age of six can receive $3,600 annually, some of which can be paid out monthly. Each child from ages six to 17 qualifies for $3,000 annually or $250 a month. The expanded child tax credit is set to end after a year, but President Joe Biden proposed to extend it through 2025 and would like it to be made permanent. More island destinations are getting onto the do not travel list by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The National Public Health Agency also added a handful of Eastern European countries to its level four COVID-19 very high category on its travel notices list. The Caribbean dual island nation St. Kitts and Nevis made its debut onto the highest risk level. So did Grenada, Mauritius and Serbia. Afghanistan is now on this level as well. The country has been in turmoil since the Taliban takeover and U.S. withdrawal last month. People should avoid traveling to locations with this designation. According to the CDC, anyone who must travel should be fully vaccinated first. Places that fall into the COVID-19 very high list had more than 500 cases per 100,000 residents in the past 28 days. 
The Torrance City Council meets tonight to conduct city business. Among the agenda items is a resolution honoring Via Hamilton of the Community Services Department upon her retirement after 23 years of service. There will also be a proclamation declaring Saturday, September 18th as Coastal Cleanup Day in the city of Torrance. And city leaders will also recognize Olympic medalist Brian Burroughs for earning a bronze medal in mixed team trap shooting. You can read the full agenda available online now at torrentca.gov and tune into the live meeting taking place beginning at 6.30 p.m. right here on our channel, online and on the city's social media platforms. Well, before we go, at the end of each program, we like to share feel-good stories from our community. Pictures, images, and videos that remind us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. As students head back to class, schools and communities around them are busier than they have been since the start of the pandemic. In an effort to keep everyone safe, the Torrance Police Department reminds all drivers and pedestrians to stay aware of increased traffic at school zones. Sergeant David Koenig says, quote, there are going to be a lot more parents, students and staff out than residents have seen in more than a year. Please drive carefully in school zones, especially during pickup and drop off times. This includes remembering what to do around school buses. The safest thing to do is stop the car when encountering a school bus with a stop sign and flashing red lights. The Torrance Police Department offers additional tips such as looking both ways before crossing the street, making sure cars can see you, walking on sidewalks when available, and crossing at marked crosswalks, preferably at stop signs or signals. What a great reminder as the new school year continues in full swing. Now, if you have a great story, upcoming event, a photo or video you'd like to share, email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. We'd love to hear from you. Well, that's our update for COVID19 today. We'll see you back here tomorrow as Christine Lee brings you the latest. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.